Hello everyone, um, thank you for coming and welcome to the screening of Kyoto Aoki's Studio Sunrise and uh, Bad Boys by Susumu Hani. Um, we're very lucky to be presenting a rare 35mm presentation of this pioneering new wave director's film. Uh, thanks to Iwanami Audio Media and the Japan Foundation for facilitating this screening. And thank you to the Barbican for hosting us. Um, after the screening, you'll be given a feedback form um, to complete. This information is essential for us being able to put on future editions of the festival. Um, so we'd really appreciate it if you could do so. Um, so for now, I'll hand over to Marcos Centeno, who would like to share a few words about Bad Boys. <laughs> Marcos is a lecturer and filmmaker currently teaching at Birkbeck University. His PhD is entitled Susumu Hani, 1950-1960, The Theoretical and Practical Contribution to the Japanese Documentary and Youth Cinema. And this is a study that sheds light on the figure of Susumu Hani as the precursor of the Japanese New Wave, interrogating his lesser-known roles as a documentary maker, film theorist, and essayist. So please join me in welcoming Marcos. Thank you very much, Joshua. Thank you uh, very much uh, for coming to this screening. Uh, first, I should start by... Uh, can you hear me? Hello? Is this mic working? Okay. I, c I can't hear, uh, see anyone. <laughs> uh, well, I should start by saying uh, I should uh, congratulate the organizers of this uh, film festival po for assembling uh, such a fascinating program and for allowing me to participate in it. Uh, Today we have the privilege of uh, watching uh, 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 Bad Boys or Furio Shonen, a, f a film uh, made by Susumu Hani, who, who is um, the, well the precursor of uh, the Japanese, the so-called Japanese New Wave. Uh, Susumu Hani um, uh, was a little bit older than the uh, the, uh, the other directors of the Japanese New Wave. Uh, he released this film in, the, in 1960. Uh, however, he had been a documentary maker during the 1950s uh, for a, a, a company named Iwanami Eiga. And, uh, well, Japanese filmmakers tend to have a long life expectancy, and, and Susumu Hani is still alive. I interviewed him a couple of years ago. Um, and during the 19, in the 1950s, uh, he was not only a documentary maker, uh, a practitioner, he was also a film theorist. And his texts were, were very, his texts on the possibilities of a new cinema were extremely influential on uh, the authors of the time. Um, and well, um, uh, he, he developed a kind of a, 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 a filmmaking method uh, that was developed in order to be applied to documentary films. However, in this is in his uh, uh, in Bad Boys and also in the in the following feature films, we find all the elements that he developed in uh, in this theory that, as I, as I, said, as I said before, uh, was developed uh, to be applied to documentary to the documentary genre. Uh, and what is this? method of filmmaking of uh, filmmaking method developed by Susumu Hani about well uh, first he uh, articulated a kind of uh, well ideas on how authors uh, could uh, make films from outside the big studios uh, so shooting films uh, on location uh, without uh, film settings without film sets, uh, without uh, professional actors. So his works are uh, pervaded by a high degree of improvisation. Improvisation carried out by people who play themselves. Also, um, well, in one of his books, in Engi Sinai Suyakutachi, published in 1958, or Protagonists Who Do, who do Not Act, um, he explained why they should work with uh, people who do not act, with uh, non-professional actors. Um, and so he rejected the use of a script. Um, and, um, well, Bad Boys is about, uh, um, as, as I, uh, um, 
a, a, a young boy and another inmates from uh, Kurihama Reformatory, a reformatory uh, which is very close from Yokosuka, it's an, an American military base. And the film is based also on a book entitled Tobenai Tsubasa, or Wings That Cannot Fly, which, um, in which uh, the psycholo psychologist uh, Akiko Jinushi collected a, a story, so, well, uh, uh, autobiographical stories of former uh, inmates of this reformatory. Um, well, um, so... Uh, so uh, the, the, the impact that this, this film had on the authors of the time was great and it triggered a, a great debate on authors and critics of the time, uh, including Hiroshi uh, Shigahara, uh, Toshio Matsumoto, uh, or even Nagisa Oshima. Nagisa Oshima who, uh, who claimed that this film broke down the boundaries between reality and fiction because it's innovative style. Um, Um, well, I should say, I should, before watching the film, I should say that uh, Sausumo Hani was uh, a, a, a representative figure of the new left in Japan, a new left uh, that emerged in 1956 uh, after, after the Soviet repression of the Hungarian uprising, which was heavily criticized by artists and intellectuals in Japan. And, and this... Uh, New Left led a, a twofold uh, rapture, an ideological and an aesthetic rapture within the left. So they reacted first against uh, realism in film. They, and the other hand, they also criticized the, uh, the orthodoxy of the Communist Party. And um, and and, uh, and and they reject they rejected as I said before the objectivism that was associated with the old left in Japan, and and they embarked on a quest to find new subjective approaches to reality, <coughs> subjectivity or should I say, which is a very ambiguous concept, which. Uh, whose meaning varied depending on who used it. In the case of Susumu Hani, so, uh, he was interested in, in the subjectivity of those characters before the camera. Um, so he was interested in exploring the anxieties, the daydreams, the traumas of the characters that he filmed. We will find some, uh, well, uh, we can uh, identify this point throughout the film, uh, th several elements, for example, references to psychoanalysis. Uh, we will hear a voice, the voice of the protagonist, that doesn't belong to any dialogue. It's actually the voice of his, uh, it's, uh, his inner voice, or the voice of his subconscious. Um, also, we, we can find this point of subjectivity uh, in, the, in the sense uh, understood by Susu Muhani uh, in the way the actors behave. And let me explain this point. Um, Susu Muhani, after the uh, the uh, after filming every day each uh, sequence or uh, scenes, they he organized. Uh, a viewing of the footage that they had shot that day, together with all the protagonists, to, to, with the, with the uh, boys of the film. And at first they were real thugs and delinquents, so they laughed about how, you know, about how they behave, they, they, their wild behavior. However, after a few days of shooting, they started to develop a kind of self-awareness. And actually, according to Susumuhani's memories, uh, they asked him to stop making the film because they didn't like the image that they were projecting on the screen. And Susumuhani told them, okay, that's fine. Uh, you don't need to behave like thugs or like troublemakers. You can be yourself or you can behave just as, as, as you feel now. Uh, so we see uh, a kind of spiritual change towards maturity in the characters which is linked to changes in the actor that is behind the character. Uh, and this is related to what, to what Oshima uh, found in the film, this uh, uh, way of breaking down the boundaries between reality and fiction. <coughs> 
Uh, I would like to also to touch on to touch upon the fact that uh, this film can be regarded as a response to commercial cinema of the time, mainly the Tayozoku films. Tayozoku films were well productions revolving around youngsters from well-off families who spent their time along Sonan coast in the sea, on the sea, on, on the beach practicing water skiing and things like that. So rich people. And and these films were, were shot along the Sonan coast, just like Bad Boys. So Bad Boys is, is located in the same area, uh, the same close to Yokosuma. The Ameri the, we have s several contradictions in this area. So high class people, uh, the, Ameri the Americans, the American military base is there. Uh, these young delinquents. So we find the references in one, there is a, uh, a funny scene at some point in the film in which this uh, Asai and his friends uh, attempt to enter a cinema to watch one of uh, these films, of these commercial films. We have on the background uh, posters of the youth, uh, the uh, icons of the time, Yujiro Ishihara, Akira Kobayashi, uh, Keichiro Akagi. However, they cannot enter the cinema because they, they have no money. So uh, they try to imitate, we've got here the irony, they, they, they try to imitate these heroes uh, portrayed in commercial cinema. However, they, they, they do, they, the irony is that they are not rich, they don't even have money to pay for the ticket. Um, there is also a mild criticism of uh, the um, uh, elites of the country in the post-war. So there is, a re at the beginning of the film, uh, there is a re well, we can see an image of one of the members of the imperial family, a princess. Uh, and, and there is a class between the image of, uh, of, these, uh, of the members of the royal family and these youngsters being uh, uh, moved to, uh, towards the, the reformatory. Um, <coughs> also references to, references to the American popular culture as well, as well Hawaiian t-shirts, sunglasses, uh, which echo the, uh, these commercial films that were popular at the time. Um, well, Bad Boys was uh, really influential uh, when it was released. Uh, Kinema Junpo Journal listed it as, as the best film of the year in 1960. Um, also, it was awarded um, in Germany, it was screened in Paris. It was commended by the filmmakers of the, la, la, la Fre the, the French Nouvelle Vague, Truffaut, Godard, Renoir. Um, and I, I should say as well that uh, the soundtrack is composed by Toru Takemitsu, a, a renowned uh, composer which is linked to other, uh, new wave uh, directors. And the critics of the time commented that the, this, the music uh, uh, well, was groundbreaking, groundbreaking for its uh, modern elements and for its transgression of jazz principles. Uh, well, I think I, sh I should leave it here because uh, yeah, I, I was told to talk to for 10 minutes. I I think it's already over, so I will leave it here. Uh, this film is a milestone in the, a milestone in the um, uh, it, it marked a turning point in the history of Japanese film, um, and I think uh, I um, I hope you will enjoy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.